What's up guys, so today I wanna to do a camera comparison between the Sony a7 III and the <laughs> Canon. What? I think I hurt my knee a little bit. <laughs> I'm not Who, that who's anymore. this guy? Who are you? What's up guys, so with me here is Gene, also known as Potato Jet on his YouTube channel. I will leave a link down below, so make sure to check him out. And what we're doing today is doing a com camera comparison test between the Canon EOS R and the Sony a7 III. We wanna find out which one has better dynamic range, which one is better in low light, which one has better autofocusing. So what we've done is we've created a couple of videos, so make sure to check some of the videos that we did on his channel. And again, I'll leave those linked down below. In this video, what we wanna talk about is uh, autofocus, which one is better in low light, and a couple of other things. What else are we gonna test today, dude? Um, which one's more durable? Here, give me your camera. Ah, yeah. no, he's crazy. So anyway, let's go ahead and begin that test. Okay, so for this first test, what we did is we wanted to test out the autofocus on both cameras. So it was only fair to use native lenses. So on the Sony, we are using the G Master 16 to 35, and on the Canon, we are using the L 16 to 35 version 2.0. And as you can see, both of these work very well. And believe it or not, it was really hard to see which one was slightly better than the other because they both did a fantastic job. But if I had to pick a winner, it would definitely be the Canon EOS R just because it was much smoother and also also more consistent compared to the Sony a7 III. Even though I know you can change the settings on the Sony a7 III, you can make it quicker, but it just doesn't look as smooth as the Canon USR. The Canon just gives it more of a manual focus pull, which is something that I like. And like I said, it was more consistent compared to the Sony a7 III. So one thing I noticed is that on the Canon EOS R, if Gene turned around, the autofocus box was still locked onto him. Whereas the Sony a7 III, if he turned around, we lose the autofocus box, meaning that if something else happens in the background, most likely we will lose focus. So yesterday we were doing a couple of low light tests and one thing I noticed is on the EOS R, it was literally pitch black. Like you couldn't see anything, but you could still see a little box around the face. So autofocus at nighttime, the EOS R, was slightly better, I believe by like 200 ISO difference. So once we bumped the ISO a little bit more on the a7 III, then they were pretty equal. But hands down for nighttime, the EOS R is gonna be a much better camera for autofocus. So for this next test, I wanted to test out the low light performance because we know that the a7 III is a beast of a camera. So I wanted to compare it to the EOS R and see how it stacked up. So what I did was I called out the ISO level as I was going up and the best way to experience this is, well, let me show you what happened. Okay. ISO 100, 2000, 2500, 3200, 4000, 5000, 6400, 8000, 10,000, 12,800, 16,000, 20,000, 25,600, 32,000, 40,000. ISO 100, 125, 2,000, 2,500, 3,200, 4,000, 5,000, 6,400, 8,000, 10,000, 12,800, 16,000, 20,000, 25,600, 32,000, 40,000, 51,200, 64,000, 80,000, and 102,400. So without a doubt, the a7 III destroyed the EOS R even when we pushed it further than 40,000 ISO. But I still wanted to see if I can find what the usable ISO levels would be on the EOS R. And after we did a couple of tests, what we've come to realize is the best or optimal settings would be in C-Log and 10,000 ISO would be the maximum I would go. Now you'll still see some noise and a bit of blotchiness, but you can add a denoiser and it will still be, in my opinion, a usable image. Now, personally, I've never pushed my a7 III even beyond 5,000 ISO. But if you do need a camera that goes beyond 10,000 ISO, obviously the clear winner would be the a7 III. So one of the things that really impressed me between the EOS R and the a7 III is how good the EOS R in 1080p is. If you guys want to watch that video, I highly recommend you check out his channel right now. I'll leave a link annotated up above so you can check it out between 4K, 1080p, it's actually really good and impressive and the results will shock you. 
So the next test we did was test out the image quality. Now I'm not talking about resolution here, I am talking about the image quality that you can get on both cameras. Both of these were set on the exact same standard picture profile that you get right out of the box and we also tested out the log format to see which one would grade much better. But we also wanted to test out the Canon color science that everybody raves about. Is it really that much better? So well you can be the judge of that but I did reach out to my Twitter followers and I put up an image side by side which one people preferred and not surprised the Canon EOS R1 by 84%. Now I did notice that when shooting in log I was able to really match it as close as possible to the EOS R. So if you are going to be using the a7 III I recommend you shoot in log if you want to get as close as possible to what people call Canon colors. Please. Yeah, so I had to bring uh, Armando over to my hometown here. There's mochi, there's ramen, there's this thing called sushi. Sushi? Yeah, you gotta, sushi, you gotta try it. It's the, the, the food of my people, so. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so one of the things I've noticed right away is on the a7 III, and I've been shooting with this camera now since it came out, is S-Log3 just literally starts to fall apart. Like you start to see a lot of image degradation and a lot of noise and when you start to really push it. Uh, with the EOS R, what impressed me in C-Log is because it's shooting really high 8-bit uh, 420, so you're getting a really, what is it, I think 400 megabits uh, per second, you're able to really push the image way further than you can with the a7 III. Even comparing it side by side, I could see that there's no artifacting or anything like that with the EOS R. So that was really impressive uh, compared to Sony. I really feel that with Sony's S-Log, in these mirrorless cameras, they're just, I mean, they're great to have, but they're not as usable as something like the FS7 or even FS5. It's nice to have, but you really can't push it as hard compared to the C-Log. This was really impressive, and I can't wait to shoot a 10-bit uh, 422 externally, and we'll be doing that video. If you guys wanna see it, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, hopefully we can get that rolling in the next couple weeks. So the last thing that we wanted to test out was highlight roll off. I always felt like the Sony cameras always have this really harsh highlight roll off compared to Canon and dynamic range. So we wanted to see which camera offered better dynamic range in a standard picture profile and also in log. Now looking at both cameras using the exact same lens on their default standard picture profile, you can see that the Canon has much more contrast compared to the Sony. Now obviously you can change the picture profile, but this is just what you get right out of the box. Also the highlight roll off. Typical Canon, it is much nicer, softer, a lot more smoother compared to the harsher Sony. But if I was looking to buy a camera that I can get a solid image right out of the box without having to worry about color grading or making any adjustments or downloading a custom profile to get Canon colors, obviously I would just buy a Canon. Now when we switch over to the log profiles, that's when things start to change and S-Log3 actually has more dynamic range than C-Log, at least in the testing that I did. Now I will say though that I did overexpose a little bit more than I should have on C-Log, mainly because S-Log3 requires a minimum of 800 ISO, which means that I had to bump the Canon side to 800. So I do want to do a little bit more testing, but I wanted to keep them at the same ISO levels just to be as fair as possible. But realizing that S-Log just requires much more exposure than C-Log, I feel that it was slightly unfair, so just take it for what it's worth, but so far from what I've seen and the limited testing that I've done, it does feel like the Sony does have more dynamic range. But again, I do wanna do more testing, and I also wanna test the Canon's 10-bit external 422 recording and see if you can get a little bit more dynamic range with that. So be on the lookout for that video coming very soon. All right, so a lot of people say the 4K from the Canon's really bad and the, the Sony has much, much better 4K. So we're going to find out if that's true or maybe it not, maybe the Sony people are going to be disappointed. Maybe the Sony 4K is just as soft as the thumbnail? Canon one. Thumbnail? We'll see. No, I should... Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> Do you guys want to see an EOS R versus C200? Let me know in the comment section down below and uh, we'll make it happen. If we get, how many likes should we get in this video to do that? 50. 
50,000? Just 50. Oh, dude. All right, we're gonna do the video. Just check back next week. It's happening. Now, you know, he, he's gone, so don't tell him this, but is it me or does he look like the guy from Up? Dude, right? he actually does. Right? He looks like That's the guy facts, from Up. Dude, dude it's, it's so crazy. That's facts. All right, guys, so that concludes the test. If you guys want to see more examples, make sure to check out his channel. He has 4K versus 1080p versus sharpness. There's a lot of good stuff. I'll leave a link down below. Also, I will be doing a full review on the EOSR. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. And make sure to also follow me on Instagram if you guys want to see behind the scenes. Thanks again for watching, and you'll catch me in the next one. Adios.